So welcome to GW Coders, um, February uh, 3rd, I guess, um, 2023. Um, just a couple of announcements before we get into today's program. Um, there are a couple of workshops coming up through the libraries that might be of interest to people. There's a Zotero workshop um, next week on the 7th. Um, there's also another one on Tableau. They did one this week, and now they'll have another one next Friday, working with real data in Tableau. Um, coming up after that, then, they do have a Python programming introductory workshop coming up on the 15th. Um, and then I was pretty excited to see. I'm probably going to have to attend this one. Coming up on... Um, I guess it's the 22nd, they're doing one with making music with Arduinos. Um, so using light sensors and stuff to make music using a microprocessor, um, which is a good segue to our next GW coders will be on February 17th. And we're then to have um, a professor from India joining us. So it'll be nighttime for him that he does work on machine learning on microprocessors. So how can you do machine learning on IoT devices is his area of research. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be on the calendar. And in the calendar is also a link to one of his papers on archive about um, this area of research. It's an introductory type article. It doesn't get into a lot of the technical. Um, but it's a good way to get introduced to kind of how are they thinking about how we can do more computing on microprocessors. Um, so it's worth taking a look at, and then he'll be joining us on the 17th to talk about what he's up to. And that's it from here, unless anyone else has anything they wanna share, any upcoming things. Okay, with that, then I'll turn it over to you, John. Okay. All right, I'll share my screen. Am I, am I like projected up onto the wall there? You are. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna post this link first of all. So I made a little demo uh, that you can I'll post it here in the chat and then I'll, I'll post it also when we post this video on YouTube. Um, so what I'm talking about today is how to make sort of templated PDFs. So this was inspired by our last meetup where Leah presented on how to use Google script or Google app script to automate the generation of PDFs from Google Docs. So she had a Word doc, a Google Doc up, it had some variables in it. And she then said, I'm gonna make, it was like thank you cards for her sister's wedding. So everyone, it would like take the name from a spreadsheet and insert it into the doc. So this is the same idea, but I'm using Quarto to do it. So Quarto is like a next generation of our markdown. Um, you may not even know what that is, so I can kind of demo it really quickly, but Porto and R are kind of built very, very similarly to both generate, like the R Markdown ecosystem was kind of created by R Studio, now called Posit, and Quarto is their next main product. So Quarto is like a, I think of it more as a publication engine. It's a ecosystem for taking text and code and generating lots of different outputs like websites, web pages, uh, PDFs, even Word docs. Like you can compile this thing to a Word doc if you want. Um, it's it's really convenient and nice um, because you can use different languages: Python, R, Julia, and Observable. That's I guess why they have four in Quarto. Those are the four things it kind of supports natively, um, and it is a separate. Um, piece of software. So you have to download this Quarto, install Quarto on your machine for this to work. But it is really nicely integrated into different tools. So if you use VS Code, it works very well with that. I'm going to show you our studio using it, but it's just well supported in a lot of different IDEs. Um, so again, you don't have to be an R user to use Quarto. You can, anyone can use this. Um, and I'm more of an R user, but today really isn't even an R thing. Um, so my demo that I, I have here, this Quarto PDF demo, is just showing how to kind of generate it to PDFs. I have two different little cases I came up with. One about making feedback for, let's say you're teaching a class and you want to give PDFs with people's grades on them to your students. And another one about 
wedding thank you cards. This is yeah, riffing on on um, Leia's thing that she uh, presented. So my first one I opened up, I, I mean, I, I downloaded this repo. It would look like this. You have these grades and wedding. So the grades one um, looks like this. And first of all, um, the, the .qmd files are my Quarto markdown documents. That's what QMD is for. And QMDs, you can compile these things to a lot of different formats. So like the most fundamental thing you need to have in, in your YAML, that's the stuff between these three lines. This is telling the document how it how you want it to be rendered. I want to render it to a, form, to a PDF. And inside PDFs, there's all sorts of options on things I want, like how, like the sizing of it, the font size, what font I want to use. I'm using Avenir. The geometry, like margins, I want one inch margins on every side. Um, so basic stuff like this. Um, and PDF, what's really happening happening when you have a PDF output is it's relying heavily on LaTeX. So what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever you're giving it here, whatever text you have, it's going to compile that into a LaTeX document and then immediately take that LaTeX and compile it to a PDF. So there's this intermediate step that you don't ever even see. It's like total witchcraft. <laughs> um, it's wizardry stuff, but um, it works very well. So I have parameters in here. I'm going to talk about what these are in a minute. But let's say like even if I didn't have these, if I just had, you know, had some text here and I hit render, what I get is a PDF that's going to have that text in it. So none of this gets shown in the PDF. This is like the instruction manual. And this is what you get, PDF with some text. And you can see this font is Avenir font. Um, and, and where this is really lovely is you can insert code and do other things. I'm not really going to highlight that today. If you wanted to put in a code chunk, you could do a little button here. It by default is using R because I'm in R Studio, but you could change this to you know Python code or whatever. But if you wanted to insert a, let's say, some kind of code and and I don't know, let's make a plot of something like what if I just do plot empty cars? What does this look like? Does this do anything? Okay, it makes that. So I could insert this document into that PDF by hitting render. And now I'm going to get a PDF with some text and a plot in it. Um, and it looks like this. See, there it is. It's stuck it in here. So there's a lot you can do with Quarto. This is what most people are using it for. It's dynamically creating a document that has text and results. And so I've written whole papers this way where I have everything. It also has a citation manager, which is relying on bib text for citations. Um, so yeah, I, I write proposals using Quarto. I write papers and submit them to journals this way. And I have my entire analysis, including my text and models and everything I'm running all inside the document. So it's it's very nice. So let's go back and look at what these parameters are. This is the focus of, of today. Parameters, um, you can define any parameters you want using this params um, item, and you can create whatever name. So in my case, this is a template that I want to generate some feedback for my students. So I have the name of the student, I have their assignment, like homework number one, whatever grade they got, and some actual written feedback, like some a long sentence or a paragraph that I might have written for them. And you, you need to give it some default values. So when you just render this thing, it'll use these default values. Um, and then you can use these parameters inside the document, all right? So there is a thing called params, which is just a list of whatever these are. And in my document, uh, I can insert them using inline code. So this little backslash, uh, sorry, uh, backtick R thing, this is code. So anything I put in here will render as code. So if I put like two plus two and I render this document, this will just become four. So what's happening here is it's it's saying, go to my parameters, uh, get the assignment parameter. And whatever was here, I want you to insert that text. So this will become homework number one. And my student will become the student name. The grade will be the grade I gave them. And here's some feedback. So I put this down here because it might be like a paragraph. So if I render this, it's going to look um, pretty similarly to what I have. Here it is. It's rendering in, by the way, this is another really nice feature of Quarto, is every time you hit render, it renders it in it, um, it like it actually saved it. it it's, it's here now. There is a template.pdf. There's the document. 
but it also shows it in my browser. So I can just quickly go back and forth between our studio and the browser and see how things have changed. So for now, it's just put in my default values. And there it is, feedback for homework one, for John Doe, he got a 98, and there's some feedback. Um, nothing too impressive yet, but where this gets really useful is when I wanna now batch generate lots of PDFs. So I could generate one of these for every one of my students. And so I, I created this little grades.csv file, which looks like this. Let me just open it and show you. The grades have different students. Um, <laughs> I was expecting Leia to be here, so I put her name in here. And let's say I have these three students. They each have two different homeworks. Here's their grades. Ryan had a really hard time on the first homework. I don't know what was going on. Um, and I have some written feedback here. Like this is a little bit of a longer sentence where it says, oh, it looks like you were having trouble on this. So I can now just render this document with one of the rows from that CSV file and basically change all these values dynamically. So I only make the template once and then I render the documents um, dynamically. So I have a code script here called make PDFs where this function called Quarto render, um, this is coming from the Quarto package. So not to be confused with Quarto, the CLI here, like this thing, once you have this installed, there is an accompanying R package. There's also a company Python package um, where you can use it. You can use it directly from the terminal. I can, I can go in here and just say like Quarto render and it'll render my PDF. Um, I can also inside R say Quarto render and it basically does the same thing. It sends a command through my terminal that says, you know, compile this thing to a PDF. So again, if I just run this, I'm gonna get the same thing back. I'm gonna get my default values back. It's going to render to a PDF and it's gonna save it as template.pdf. There it is, template.pdf. Um, but now let's say I wanna do it for each student. So here's my grades. I've read it in as a, my CSV. Now I have a data frame that has the names and the information about each student. And I can loop this. So now I'm just gonna iterate through every row, one row at a time. So like for row number one, when I is one, I'm gonna do the first student, me. Um, here I'm just generating the path name. So it looks like this. Um, actually, sorry, this won't work. I have to get rid of the PDF bit. This is one annoying thing that it's uh, it's still relatively new. So you can only render right now using Quarto Render. You can only render to the root directory. So all my files are going to get stuck here. I would rather than be in a subfolder, but we can't do that yet. Um, at least I haven't found a way to do it yet. So it's going to be called this. It's going to be called Homework One John PDF. And here I've got the same function. So I have the same information. I'm using my template. I want it to be a PDF. Um, it's gonna save it to that name, but I have these execute parameters now. So this is where I'm passing through the information that's going to replace these things. So all of these parameters are gonna be replaced with a list of the values inside this row. So row name is saying, give me the, the name column for my single row that I've sliced out. The assignment is like homework one, the grade was 98, and the feedback was this uh, sentence that says, nice work. Okay, so I can render one of these and you can kind of see what it looks like. It's going to do a bunch of stuff where it's making, you can see it happening too. It's creating a LaTeX file and stuff, and then it ends up uh, making my PDF and it gets rid of all those intermediate files. So here it is. All right, so, so my templated one um, up here, um, let's see what it looks like. Uh, you can compare them. So here's my template where it just says the default values. Here's my one for me. I've it says homework one. I've put John Helveson. Nice work. Um, so let's loop it. Now I'm going to make six of these things because I have six different, um, students and it's just going to start compiling and you'll see these PDFs, uh, piling up in here. And this is actually what I do with my own students. So in my my courses, I don't use Blackboard to post people's grades. I use Box. And since Box is free at GW, I generate a PDF for every student. And then I just copy that PDF into their Box files. And so they very quickly get feedback from me. And no one had to go into Blackboard and edit things. I just send you a PDF. You could also just email it to them. 
but here you go. I've got PDFs for different different people, and you can see the the feedback and the grades and the names. And what's really nice is you can actually change, like you can put markdown code in here too, and it renders it. So like when I look at this one, Ryan, obviously I'm just picking on you here, but um, like let's say we had a student that was struggling and I wanted to give them a more detailed feedback. I said, oh, you forgot to load the packages like this. That's why your functions wouldn't run. Notice that this text looks a little bit different. And that's because in my grades file, I actually put little back ticks here, which is markdown code that this thing knows how to render. It, it will render this in a sort of code monospace format. So I can I can do all, all sorts of things in here. I, I, I could say, you know, uh, make sure you also install it with, you know, install.packages uh, tidyverse. I could be writing code here. And now this will appear when I re-render this thing. Um, I can just do everything. And then once this is done running, it will um, it'll update this and you'll have that extra text. So that's the gist of what I wanted to cover today in about you know, 10, 15 minutes um, of how to generate these you know, different dynamic PDFs. So it's very similar. It's actually this, we're achieving the same goal as what Leia showed last week using Google Apps Script and Google Docs. The difference here is that we're relying a little more on LaTeX and your understanding of LaTeX to do the formatting and things. So you're completely separated from Microsoft Word here. And the documents, you know, to, to change the way they look and things, for the most part, you, you can just insert plain text here. You can write whatever you want here. Um, but if you want it to look a particular way, you want to have a background border around it, you want to do things that are a little fancy, then you have to figure out, you know, how do I do this in LaTeX? And you can write straight up LaTeX code as well in here, and it will also know what to do with that. It'll just render it. Um, so this one was the simpler one because it's just grades and it's just inserting text and dropping it in place. And um, That's the other one, sure, yeah. If you go back to your render, one the making PDFs, yeah. So are those within the Quarto render function? Like, is execute params a required name for it? Yes. Or is that just like, okay. So yeah, these are the these required. are the names. So it is weird. I wish it would just be called params because in the YAML it's called params. <laughs> like this is not. If you if you say execute params here, it won't work. It it, it has to be called params here. Of course, you can generate whatever names you want for your parameters. You can make up as many as you want. But when you pass this through, it has to be called execute params. So that's what it is in the help file. Um, and this is this is building on our markdown. So all of everything I'm showing you, you can also do with our markdown. You don't need Quarto to do this. If you've used our markdown, you can do the exact same thing. And that's what I've done for years. I'm just demoing Quarto because I think it is. Uh, in general, a better ecosystem, and it's it's going to become, as it gets better, um, a much a much more flexible and and just sort of well built system. Um, and it's also outside of R, right? So it lives outside of R. It's 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 not packaged with R, and so you can use it for all sorts of things. You you actually don't even have to. Like I'm using an R script here to automate the generation of these things, but this could have been a Python script. And you're using the Python package to to call Quarto render, which there is one for that too. Um, and I like that. I like that Quarto lives outside of that, and you can kind of be more flexible. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll show one other example. Um, that was my you know grading one, which now you can see this updated, right? It, this is the the thing I added to that little that little demo and it's still now it says like make sure you also install it with install packages whatever so yeah that that's how i send feedback to my students um the wedding cards i tried to do something similar to what Leia showed where i'm like looking at gifts so i have gifts uh that people sent and then this time i wanted to actually show something different where you might want to show a different message based on what you were given so like let's say i kept a spreadsheet of who gave me gifts for my wedding and some people gave me money and some people gave me like things. So I called it, <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> you thank, thank you, poster. <laughs> now I just, I'm just messing with you the whole time here. He gave me a thing versus other people gave me money. And so I kept track of that. I said, what, you know, one of these things is money and one is, is a thing. Because oftentimes, you know, when someone gives you money, you don't necessarily want to say, thank you for giving me the hundred dollars. Like that sounds weird. You might just want to be, thanks for your gift. But if you give me a thing, I might actually want to say thanks for that thing and actually tell you what it was, because I don't know. Let's just say that's what you wanted to do. So I'm, I want to render things differently. So in this case, I had two templates. I had a template for a thing and a template for money. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how I'm doing this. So as you can imagine, it looks very similar. In this case, I chose a slightly different font. I wanted it to look a little prettier. This is an open for a free font that you can get on Google Fonts. Um, in this case, I just had a name and a gift. And my message was very simple. It said, dear whoever, thank you so much for your gift. It was so thoughtful. And that's my wife's name. So I figured this is for my wedding, right? Um, versus the thing version, the only difference here is, is thank you so much for your gift of a whatever it was. And it was so thoughtful. So technically, I actually don't even need this here. I'm not even using the parameter, but I just copied it over. So, um, so one is a thing, one is a gift. And I have a slightly different message. You'll also see that I've written LaTeX code actually here because I wanted the thank you to be in the middle of the page. And if I just wrote like, thank you like this, um, that would be left justified. And there isn't really a great way to do this yet other than just to write LaTeX code. So if you put center and make it large in bold font, it'll, it'll look like this. So I can render this one and you can see the defaults, like what they look like. Um, that's the thank you for the thing. Thank you so much for your gift of a thing. It was so wonderful and thoughtful. And then here's the money one where I'm trying to be more polite and maybe not say exactly how much you gave me. Thank you so much for your gift. Um, so this one, the only thing changing is the name. So in my make PDF script, there's an if statement now. And that's the only difference. I, I read in my gifts. I'm, I'm looking at these gifts that people have. And based on the gift category, so if the category is money, then I want you to render the money one. If it's a, otherwise use the thing one in here, I'm still passing through the gift, even though I don't really use it. Um, here I am going to use the gift. So it, it renders through just picking which template to use. Um, and I'm going to get three PDFs back that are bespoke to that person. Um, so this is the this one, dear John, thank you so much for your gift because they gave me money. I didn't want to say anything else. Same thing for here, but it just says, dear Leah. But for Ryan, it says, thank you for your toaster. <laughs> it was so thoughtful. All right, so it's it's not very fancy, you know, it's the bare bones of how you might do this, but it gives you a template and an example. And like I said, I have a repo here that I posted and I'll I'll post this under the video too of these examples. So if you ever want to play with this or you want to um, you know, use it or uh, as a as an example, you you have it now. Um, but that's that's the gist of of, you know, passing parameters. So it's very flexible. I mean, because you can generate whatever parameter name you want and whatever values you want. And typically, this is my approach is to just have a CSV file that stores all the values you want to insert and update that thing. And then as you update that, you can just re recompile, rerun your script here to recompile everything. Um, I also added one thing here on the repo, a link to Megan Hall's post. She has a great website with lots of really cool things, but um, she's a big R user. And she has a whole post on renderizing parameterized reports. Um, and she does it in some clever, like very clever ways where you're using map instead of loops because our people don't like loops. Um, I'm fine with loops. Uh, but uh, anyway, lots of other things that you can do to make like just really cool um, Documents. In this case, she has all of this is in the PDF. So it's a pretty complicated PDF. She's inserting images and changing colors. And so you can really go crazy with like how you can customize the outputs. But um, that's that's for the extra extra bonus for the folks who really want to go further with uh, with Corto. Um, so that's all I have. Um, I can answer any more questions. I, uh, I have one. So is it only CSV or Excel that we can use? Can we have databases? 
Oh, totally. I mean, however you want to get the data into whatever language you're using oh, is no, fine. Just, uh, like get the data the whole, into the tank and okay. If you had a database where you had things or you had an Excel sheet, you can read that in uh, at the top. And then that, I mean, that's the thing that's defining the things that I'm iterating over. And, and in my loop, I'm just going over every row for one and however many rows there are of that data frame. And I'm just looping through and making a PDF for each one. So you can store it however. I just, you know, use the simple CSV for this demo. Oh, so it's an R file. You're just, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah this, this file is an R script where it's reading in the data and then it's going through a loop to call this Corto render. So it's it's calling Corto inside R to go out and render it for me, which again, this could have been a Python script. I, I could have a Py script that reads in my GIFs file. And in Python, you can also, you know, write loops. And there is a Corto package for Python that you can use to call Corto to go render this, um, this document. So this would be the same, like the template QMD file would be exactly the same, whether I'm using R or Python. This that's kind of a nice thing. It, it this doesn't matter. You you write this up separately. It's its own sort of thing. You you the YAML is the only thing that's sort of unique to Quarto, and they have really great documentation on like how you know what are all these different things I've put in here. Like this is table of contents. You know what type of document you want. Down here you're writing Markdown code. Um, so I'm using, I guess, okay, so this would be slightly different. I'm using um, uh, inline R code to insert my parameters. But even that, I think, um, doesn't change. Like, uh, this doesn't, like, you could still render this from Python and it would render. I, I believe you might, you might have to have R installed on your machine, but I'm not sure. Um, but it is, I mean, it does work very well inside the entire sort of R, R Studio ecosystem. It's it's nicely built. Like R Studio ha has a lot of nice features. Like you'll see when when these render, it says local host. So R Studio is actually like serving this to my browser so I can see it and update it. And if I wanted to make a change to something, I could change the template, re-render it, and then this would update. Um, so there's some really nice integrations with R Studio here when you're working with Porto. But VS Code is also really good. If you had like automating invoices or receipts for people that you want to send out then as PDFs automatically. Yes. You can um, easily automate that process. Whenever the database gets updated, you generate an email out a PDF document. Oh, yeah. I've done that project in the same thing. Just like yeah. In all of this place, you just generate the PDFs. Yeah. So I'm I'm focused on PDF generation here, which again is there's a middleman in here, which is LaTeX. I mean, that's that's what's happening in in between. And like you can, like I said, you can see it when you actually render something. You click the render button, you'll see the log files, and there's a text file. There it is, right there. You see it, and then it disappears. <laughs> so it actually creates a LaTeX file. And then it compiles the PDF and gets rid of it. Now you can keep it. I, I'm pretty sure there's an option that's like keep, keep text, keep and yeah, keep text. If I do this and I render, you know, then um, I'll actually get the text file back, and you can see the intermediate step, like what it did. So it it generated this, which looks crazy. Um, like this is like obviously humans wouldn't write. LaTeX like this, it's a little bit silly, but Quarto's in an algorithm. So it's just generating LaTeX. Like my message is only right here. There was 150 lines of code to just all sorts of weird formatting things. And then the actual <laughs> content before it ends the document. So, you know, rendering this would be it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, and it's using all these packages and things, but, you know, I never have to worry about that. I just write this bit. I write nice, clean, simple markdown code. And a lot of those packages were based on things that I'm doing here, like my choices of fonts, font sizes, margins. It, it's it's writing the code I need to do that. So I usually don't keep this. I, this is off by fault. By default, it's false. So if you just get rid of it, it won't it won't keep it. Um, 
but that's for PDFs. I mean, you could do the exact same thing if you wanted to have an HTML. You just say HTML, and then you would render this. And for HTML, these are a little bit different. Uh, so some of these things like the geometry, you don't need this. There isn't really no such thing here for HTML outputs. But I could just try, like, what if I just get rid of some of these things that I know are, these are all very, uh, I think this would be all I need for an HTML output, and it would render to a web page. Yeah, there's a web page that says it has the right font and everything. And so now this is here, template money. Sorry, that's the PDF template money that HTML. There it is. So it doesn't take much to swap back and forth between different output types. You could automate the generation of web pages as well. Um, but I'm using PDF. So just for this demo. Yeah. I guess it's nice too that you can do LaTeX and Markdown. Yeah. Code, whatever you want all together <laughs> and it clears it out later. Yeah, it, it kind of knows what to do. I obviously spelled this wrong. Um, it knows what to do uh, it, because it is going to, it does create an actual text file as an intermediate step. Whenever it sees LaTeX code, it just keeps that where it is. It doesn't actually have to change anything. It says, oh, you've already done it for me. Whereas if I had, if I had written, let's say like, thank you like this with text or markdown script it would actually turn that into this. Just like a lot harder to type. It would turn it into text bold font, right? I think this is a lot easier to type. You know, for me, I, I this is so much better. That I, I really can't stand writing LaTeX. It's really painful because it's so many brackets and things. Whereas, you know, Markdown is just lovely and quick and beautiful. The other thing that's nice is this will make that font bold regardless of the output type. So if I change to HTML, it's still bold, whereas this won't. When you change to HTML, it doesn't know what to do with this. So it just actually writes that whole text in there, which is weird. So as much as I can, I try to use markdown code, um, but there isn't actually a good markdown script for like making something center justified. So, so that's why I kind of had to do this because it's inside this, this center command. So I actually had to write a lot of that code. Why are we installing uh, Quadro uh, explicitly if we have packages? Um, you mean like here? Like why am I doing this? Yes. It is only for CLI. So Quarto is its own uh, thing. <laughs> it's its own software. It's, um, it's not part of R or Python or another script. It is something that you have to install on your computer. And like, if you open up terminal, there's Quarto commands that you can run. Like you can say Quarto, Quarto render and give it the path, you know, to, to some file, uh, something that ends in .qmd and it will render it. So it's, this is actually what's kind of happening in the background. It's not really related to R or Python or any other language. It is its own language um, that compiles to outputs. So I really kind of describe it more as a um, publication package. It's a it's a piece of software that helps you um, publish things. Like how do you want to make output? Do you want to make a PDF? Do you want to make web pages, websites, blogs, um, even slides? I mean, there's so much more. I just am showing you one. I mean, you can write whole books. I wrote my book, um, P P four A. Kind of like this whole book is an online book um, that I wrote. It's a quarto book, um, and there are um, uh, webs. Like the, I think some of the most impressive things are presentations. Presentations are really pretty. Um, you can generate uh, presentations to like a reveal JS pretty looking one. You can make PowerPoints, you can make Beamers, but it's kind of the same idea. You have a YAML and then you have some plain markdown text and you get uh, like, you look, it looks like this and it renders into a um, uh, a slideshow. I'm trying to see if there's an example somewhere uh, like here. Like this is one that's embedded on a page, but this is a Quarto rendered slideshow that's using Reveal.js. Um, 
So very pretty slides, like very beautiful, nice web embedded one with a little menu that you can uh, skip through. I mean, it, it's it's quite lovely. So you're in the same environment like of this for making PDFs. I could change this to like a slideshow. I think it's Reveal.js. If I change this to Reveal.js, now I can make a slideshow about this, which is kind of weird. Um, uh, so so it's Corto is all of those things. It's about taking your content, um, code, text, whatever, uh, and converting it into outputs of different formats. And you can insert code if you want. You can insert R, you can insert Python and other things. And that's what makes it really powerful is being able to go beyond just raw text. But if, if you're doing nothing but just writing a paper and it has just text and citations in it, I would still recommend using Quarto because it's really, really nice way to write. It's it it renders things really pretty. So you could just write plain text here um, and render it to a PDF and submit that somewhere, and which, which is what I do now when I write proposals and, and papers. I write almost all of my work um, in this, and unless I'm working with someone who is a collaborator who doesn't want to do this, and then I have to use Word or something. But I would much prefer to use uh, Quarto to write my my documents. So do you write then on your R server so that you can collaborate in real time? Um, I don't. I use GitHub for you know that. So that's yet one other thing that's really nice when you are doing collaborative work and, and people do want to use this is I can make changes. And then when I see, I can see those changes in GitHub. Like, so, you know, here's a bunch of things I've, I've done. I rendered all those documents. So it's like, here's all these PDFs that have been generated. So, um, but if I made a change, you know, and I, and I changed something here, you would see it in, in my GitHub repo, like here, you made this change to the text. So it's kind of, you're getting track changes for free and you're also getting version control for free. So like, if you're writing something that's purely plain text and there's nothing else to it, like this is just a plain text script. You can open it with anything you know, the template QMD file, I'm opening it here with Sublime Text. I had it open with our studio here. It's very nice to write plain text, in my opinion. It's just easier to track changes over time and version control things. And so that's how I get, you know, that kind of, um, you get that for free when you collaborate with this. Um, but But not many people I work with, you know, use this yet. So, this is mostly for my own things, like individual grants I'm writing or something. Going back to papers and citations, how would you format citations, uh, especially connecting to a citation manager? Like, would you have those separately? Yeah, there is. So I haven't played too much with it, but basically the way I would do it is to have a bib, bib file. Um, so this is, it's gonna manage citations the way that LaTeX would. Um, and so you can have a, I think it's bib, yeah, bibliography, and you would say like, you know, references.bib or whatever. And then in your file, you would have a bib file that's storing all those. Now, you don't have to be that one that makes this. And there are integrations with Zotero, so I'm not sure actually where this is. Um, there is a way of, of working with Zotero, and then when you say insert a citation, it like pops up and you can say insert this. And it sticks it in. And so the the Quarto reference is this at something like at Helvis in 2023 would be the paper and it's in brackets. So it looks different from LaTeX. LaTeX would be something like this, like site. But this one, you just put brackets and you put an at sign and you put the name of the author. And in your bib file, there needs to be a bib text entry that has all the information about that. So it would generate it here and it would it would then put references at the bottom for you. You wouldn't have to do any of that yourself. It just, you just tell it where that bib file lives and start inserting citations. And so it's it's pretty nice for that. There is also a visual editor, which I didn't really want to spend, I wasn't planning on showing, but I'll show it. This is called the source editor. When I click over to visual editor, the YAML is the same, but um, it actually looks more like Microsoft Word. And like you can see here, like bold italic. So if I wanted to make, you know, your gift, 
and make that and it like so much bold you can kind of edit things like this and then when you go back to the source it's actually done the markdown for you so if you're not familiar with markdown you can kind of write your plain text the way you would normally write you can even insert images right uh you can insert i think this is where i was thinking about citations code chunks but there's a citation yeah insert a citation here you go and now i can have a, a, a zotero library like i have a zotero library on my computer so it knows where to look and i can start looking for like elvis in 2025 yeah here's some papers i've written so i could say insert that thing and uh and it's stuck it over here references.bib and and you see a references.bib file that popped up and there it is so it automated that for me that's where it was it was in the reference editor so if i if i go from source to visual it's a little easier to kind of write things and you can start to get citations for free um and it's gonna it's gonna update this for me i never have to copy paste all my bib stuff it does it for me so that's really nice um let me see what happens if i click render now like this should this is the template money Oh, that's because I have bibliography defined twice. Let's get rid of that there. Uh, it should insert that citation and actually have it at the bottom of my, now my thank you note analogy is going away completely. <laughs> so here it is, it inserted Helvis in 2022 and it put my <laughs> citations there. Um, so it's, it is working. Um, I might do something at the end, like just put in, you know, references here and then render it so that it separates the two, but um, you can see what it's doing. It's it's doing all that work for me. Um, so it's it's quite nice. And again, if I go back to source, you'll see that this actually doesn't change. It looks the same. Um, I could make it bigger references. But um, that's that's how this kind of works. So once you've played around with it a little bit, you can start getting um, uh, nice results very quickly. Um, so this was much more of a demo of Quarto in general than um, what I intended. I was just kind of showing you how to parameterize your documents with these kinds of things, but there's so much more to, <laughs> to Quarto. And I could do a whole nother day where we just talk about like Quarto presentations or Quarto websites, um, all sorts of things. Cool. Okay. So okay. maybe that's a good stopping point. Yeah. Um,